Hi, this is Yosif Xenogiannis and Manos Berlakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 24 for the Manual of Non-CTO Coronary Interventions. This is a case of an LAD calcified and bifurcated lesion. The patient presented with unstable angina and was found to be hypertensive with negative cardiac biomarkers and no significant EKG changes. His echocardiogram was actually within normal limits. He was referred for coronary angiography. And the first thing that stands out in this angiogram is this multiple little black circles that are not moving with the heart, which means they're not in the heart, but they're rather on the chest wall. And the question is what those little pellets are. And the answer is that these are the so-called buckshot, which is essentially the little metal lead shots that are fired from a shotgun and then they disperse and they hit people and sometimes they become essentially embedded in the subcutaneous tissues and they cannot be removed and that's exactly what this patient had in the past he was shot with a shotgun and these little pellets remain are what remains from the shot so this is the x-ray appearance of the back shot of the little lead shots looking at the coronaries he did have a significant middle AD lesion. This is after intracoronary nitroglycerin administration and moderate lesions in the proximal AD as well as the obtuse marginal branch. There was no significant lesion in the right coronary artery and therefore the plan was to treat the middle AD lesion. Um, this was a bifurcation with a very large uh, diagonal branch. Therefore, we decided to protect the branch. We used uh, workhorse wires to wire both the LAD as well as the diagonal branch. We typically don't predilate the side branch unless, unless there is significant osteal disease because there is a risk of dissecting it and then requiring to place a stent. We predilated the vessel and then did, did um, uh, optical coherence tomography to determine whether we needed to do a therectomy or some other vessel preparation. And what we found is that there was some calcification this is the well circumscribed dark areas. However, the, it was not circumferential, it was only a part of the vessel. And that is why we decided not to perform a therectomy. There was a um, good quality proximal vessel with some intermediate lesion in the proximal LAD all the way to the left main. So our plan was to predilate and stand. We did uh, deploy a 2.5 by 38 millimeters drug eluting stand, essentially jailing the wire into the diagonal branch. And this is something that we routinely do for large side branches. The downside, of course, is the potential for entrapment. But the upside is that if uh, there is uh, significant disease or uh, there is loss of flow into the side branch, it can be very hard and impossible to wire whereas having the wire there protects it and also makes it easier to rewire, or worse comes to worse, its flow is lost, one can advance a balloon over the jail guide wire and essentially make it all the way down to the side branch and restore flow to it, subsequently enabling rewiring. We stented, there was uh, indeed some uh, osteal lesion created after stenting. Sometimes one can do FFR of those lesions. However, this was uh, significant enough by angiogram. Therefore, we decided to treat it. So we rewired using the original jail wire as a marker and used the second wire to rewire through the struts of the place stent. We used a polymer jacketed wire field that I've seen this particular case and dilated the diagonal with a 2.0 millimeter balloon and then did the kissing balloon inflation with a 3.0 millimeter balloon in the LAD and a 2.0 millimeter balloon into the diagonal branch. This gave a nice result. We did an OCT to check uh, our geographic result and we saw that um, the stand was well expanded and well opposed. This is the origin of the diagonal with the side branch coming in. This is the second guide wire. But essentially the vessel is well expanded, the stand is well expanded, and there's some other position at the proximal edge of the stand, right over here. We therefore postulated with a 3.5 millimeter NC balloon. And then we thought we were done. But there was this intermediate lesion in the proximal LAD and we want to make sure we didn't miss anything. So we did perform 
coronary physiology, we did uh, the resting um, gradient, PDPA, which was actually 0.87, less than 0.91 cutoff. We then did contrast FFR, which is the same as FFR, but instead of adenosine, contrast is done, and the cutoff for this is 0.83, and we're ischemic based on that, and this was confirmed when we did intracoronary adenosine. So the patient did have significant residual disease, and actually the step up was proximal to the middle AD stand. So this is an example where geographically we didn't really think there was much disease there. However, by coronary physiology, we found that there was actually significant ischemia due to proximal lesion in the LED. We placed an additional 3.5 by 28 millimeters dragolutin stand in the proximal LED, and this did give a nice final result. The post-PCI FFR was 0.91, and the patient had an uneventful recovery. There are several things that are interesting in this case. The first one is the angiographic appearance of the backshot, these little metal pellets that uh, represent previous uh, um, firing of a shotgun on the patient. The second is uh, the use of a jailed guide wire in the side branch during provisional standing. The jailed guide wire provides a safety net in case the flow is compromised. But at the same time, there is a small risk of uh, guide wire entrapment. However, this can be minimized by using a polymer jacketed guide wire. And also, if there is resistance in pulling the wire back, no force should be applied, but instead a small balloon or microcatheter advanced to help uh, free the guide wire from its entrapment. Third point is the use of OCT, both as a planning tool we did see that there was some calcification, but it was not circumferential, and the vessel was otherwise um, uh, not uh, heavily calcified, and therefore we did not do atherectomy at baseline. We also used it and found some stem malaposition after the placement of the first stem that was treated with uh, post dilation with a larger balloon. And finally, it, it shows the importance of a post-PCI FFR. This is something increasingly being done to check the result of percutaneous coronary intervention. In this particular case, the proximal LAD did not seem to have significant disease. However, when we did the post-PCI PDPA, IFR, and FFR, there was significant ischemia that was corrected with placing an additional drug eluting stand. Thank you.